Welcome to the worship service of St. Matthew Lutheran Church and Early Childhood Center in Hawthorne Woods, Illinois. Our theme for the year is Rejoice Always. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This weekend we celebrate the ninth Sunday after Pentecost under the theme, For the Sake of My Kinsmen, based on the reading from Romans chapter 9. There will be a children's message. We call it the feeding of the lambs here at St. Matthew, and that will happen in this service. There are a few matters of importance. A reminder that this Sunday, August 2nd, the drive-in service will be held in our east parking lot at 9 o'clock, weather permitting, and then we will celebrate the sacrament of the altar as drive-through communion. Next Sunday, August 9th, we will again assemble here in the sanctuary for worship at 9 o'clock, and the sacrament again will be offered. On that same day, August 9, following the service, there will also be a meeting of the voters' assembly at 10.30, right here in the sanctuary, and we will be discussing decisions that will affect the mission and ministry of our congregation over the next year or so. So please, make every effort to attend, and once again, for both those events, please call or email to RSVP. All will be required to wear a face covering, so bring your face covering and hand sanitizer. This is the contemporary worship service. So we begin in the words of our baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our first two songs are Waymaker and how great is our God. May the Lord God bless our worship together.
the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God, sing with me. How great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. with you together let us pray to the Lord Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father though, though we do not deserve your goodness still you provide for all our needs of body and soul grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your gifts give thanks for all your benefits and serve you in willing obedience through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. The first reading for the ninth Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me, hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold. I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. 
Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 9. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. Together with me? For For I could could wish wish that that I myself were accursed and and cut cut off off from from Christ Christ for the the sake sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race according to the flesh is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory Glory to to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, when Jesus heard about the death of John the baptizer, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And Jesus said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Welcome to the Feeding of the Lambs, the children's message here at St. Matthew. I have with me a lunch. I brought with me a couple loaves of bread. So I got some bread. And today, for lunch, let's see what we're having. Got my lunchbox here. Oop, there's some ice in here. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Rainbow trout. Now, if you were here with me today, this would be enough lunch for me, but not necessarily for all of us, now would it? There would simply not be enough bread or fish for all of us today. It would take a miracle. Jesus was teaching a big number of people, 5,000 men, and that didn't include women and children, moms or, or children. So there were a lot of people, and they were getting hungry. And after Jesus was done teaching, he said to his disciples, feed them. And they were flabbergasted. There was no Marianos or Jules around. They didn't have enough to feed all these people. All they had were a couple loaves and a couple fish. Certainly not enough to feed all those people. It would take a miracle. Well, it's a good thing that Jesus is in the miracle business. He could take that little bit of fish and a little bit of bread, and feed all those people, 5,000 men, not including the moms or the kids. So many people. A while later, a couple years maybe later, Jesus was arrested. He was put on trial. He was sentenced to die by crucifixion. But it was all part of God's plan to save all people from their sins. 
How could one man die to forgive all the sins of billions of people, including you and me? It would take a miracle. And that's exactly what happened. A miracle. Jesus' death on the cross forgives all the sins of all people of all time, starting with Adam and Eve, and all the people that lived after Adam and Eve, including you and me. Jesus' death was mir a miracle, just like his multiplying the loaves and the fishes to feed so many people. His death forgives all people. And it's now your job and my job, called by Jesus, to tell them this wonderful good news of this miracle of Jesus' death and resurrection. Let's give thanks to God in our prayer about that. I'll say the words and you repeat them, please. Dear God, dear God, we thank you, we thank you for giving us, for giving us our daily bread, our daily bread, and we thank you, and we thank you for Jesus, for Jesus, whose death and resurrection, whose death and resurrection forgives all the sins, forgives all the sins of all people, of all people. Tell us, help us, this good news, this good news, so we can, so that we can, tell others, tell others, this good news, this good news. In Jesus' name we pray, in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Oh, oh. 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. St. Paul writes in Romans 9, and I'm going to come back to this again, and it is your heart work for today. He gives us a glimpse into his passion. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers and kinsmen according to the flesh. For Paul, that word accursed had a specific image in mind. It would be crucifixion, hanging on a tree. The book of Deuteronomy says that cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. So that's what Paul is saying. I wish that I could be crucified if it would save my kinsmen, my fellow Israelites, my fellow Jews. Paul went on at least three missionary journeys that we're told about in the book of Acts. And he would walk just about everywhere he went unless he was taking a boat to several different places like islands. And he would walk the dusty paths and the dusty trails and he would walk into a village. And you know the first place he went to? It was a synagogue. It was where the fellow kinsmen that he talks about in Romans 9 would gather for worship. Why would he do that? Why would he go first to his fellow kinsmen? After all, he would say that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. But the first place he goes is to the synagogue. Why? Because he had a shared value and shared vision with his fellow kinsmen, his fellow Jews. The value of God's holy word, the Ten Commandments, and what we would call the Old Testament and the covenants, and the temple worship, and the sacrificial system, and the shared vision of the coming of the Messiah. Well, of course, Paul knows who that Messiah is. It is Jesus, the Christ, which means, the Christ means Messiah, anointed one. And he went first, because this was his passion, to his fellow kinsmen, his Jewish brothers and sisters to tell them the Messiah has come. Everything we were waiting for is now here. He has come. He has died on the cross to forgive our sins. He rose from the dead to give us the true life that God intended for us to have all the way back in the Garden of Eden and Adam and Eve. And for the most part, Paul was rejected at the synagogues. Not everybody rejected him, but many people did. And so Paul went out to the marketplace in each town, to the other people that were there. And many times in the book of Acts, it'll reference those people as Greeks, because they were basically in a Greek-speaking part of the world. And so that was anybody who was not a Jew, it was a Greek. And so he would proclaim to them the very same thing that he proclaimed to his fellow kinsmen. That was Paul's first passion to proclaim to them Jesus as the coming Messiah, to proclaim to them that Jesus died on the cross to forgive all their sins. Isn't that good news? You and I are forgiven of all our sins by this very same Jesus that Paul had a passion to proclaim to his fellow kinsmen. And Jesus Christ rose from the dead three days later so that at the end of all time, if we die in this world, our graves will be empty on the last day. We will rise also from the dead and spend eternity in paradise, which is often depicted in the book of Revelation as some kind of garden, some kind of garden city, a beautiful place where there's no pain and no sorrow and no sin and no death and no tears. Paul went first to the Jews, and when he was rejected, he then went to the Gentiles. But he went to the Jews first because of that shared vision and shared values. See, that's how God created us as human beings, that we would seek out other people that had a shared vision and shared values. Think about this. This is how I, it was described to me just a little while ago, and I wanted to bring this to you today. I live in Hawthorne Woods. 
Now, I don't know everybody in Hawthorne Woods. That would be kind of weird if I did. It's a huge village, eight, 9,000 people. There's no way I could know all people. But if I were to go down to Wrigley Field, which anybody that knows me would be unlikely, I would rather be at Guaranteed Rate Field on the south side. But if I was there and I sat down next to someone I didn't know, but I found out they're from Hawthorne Woods, oh my, hooray, we are best buddies now because we're outside of the village, but we're together. We are from the same place. Or if I were to travel to Los Angeles, for example, on vacation. Now, nobody's really traveling all that much for vacation, especially to California. But if I go to California, Los Angeles for vacation, and I'm on, let's say, the, the metro, the, the train line out there, and the person in front of me has a shirt that says, a Chicago White Sox shirt. We're from Illinois. Hey, we're from the same place. We would never really give any thought if we saw each other in Hawthorne Woods, but since we're in a strange place, strangers in a strange land, we're together because we're from the same state. Maybe we go overseas. Go to Germany, for example. Here I am in Berlin, walking down the streets in Berlin, and I hear someone speaking with an American accent. Hey, you're from America, I'm from America. We're the same. We're strangers again in a strange land but we're far away so see this is how we are as humans we seek out these tribal things of shared vision shared value shared experiences as christians we also have a shared tribe shared vision shared value shared experiences jesus christ died and rose to forgive our sins and calls us all together to share that good news with other people we have a common message that is the gospel, that Jesus was born, that he lived, that he died, that he rose, and that he ascended into heaven. We have a common goal, to get to heaven someday. Jesus will take us home to heaven when he comes back again. We have a common vision, same as St. Paul, actually, to be a witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ, to be a witness to Jesus, everyone his witness. And we have a common value the Word of God, the means of grace, word and sacrament. That's what binds us together as Christians, strengthens our faith. And as we gather together to worship, whether it be in the room or in this medium at this time, we have that commonality, that common vision and value and goal and message. Paul's passion can be our passion. Do you have a passion? For the people who need to hear about Jesus in your town, in your village, in your city? Let's get that passion. Let's ask God to fill us with that passion to go and meet other people. To go out and share that gospel of Jesus Christ with them. We have that common tribe where we can gather together as Christians to strengthen our faith, but then go out because we have a common shared experience with other people too. They are flesh and blood, we are flesh and blood. They are sinners, we are sinners. They are in need of forgiveness. We have that forgiveness in Jesus Christ. Let's share that with them as well. Let's bring the gospel to our kinsmen. Along with St. Paul, let us find that passion that he had. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. That's how much he cared. That he would be willing to give everything up if they would believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And Paul did give everything up to bring the gospel to the world. And we have the same common vision and passion and value in us. It is the power of the Holy Spirit working within us through the means of grace. Let us go out and share that vision with others. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's join our hearts and minds together as we confess our Christian faith. We'll use the words of the Nicene Creed. You'll find the Nicene Creed that is printed on page 9 of the service folder. If you have a copy of Lutheran Service Book, it is in the back inside cover of the hymnal. We confess together. I believe, I believe in one God, the, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, 
being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And, and I, I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time in our worship service, normally we would receive the offering. Since we can't do that here, we do have several options by which you may support the mission and ministry of our Lord here at St. Matthew. You can bring your offering with you when you come into the drive-in service. You may mail your offerings in. You may use the PayPal feature on our homepage of the website, or you may make an automatic withdrawal from your bank account. The biblical principle of Christian stewardship that we'd like to bring to your attention this week is that we give according to how the Lord has blessed us, proportionate to our income. 2 Corinthians 8, St. Paul writes, For I bear witness that according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were freely willing to give. But first, they gave themselves to the Lord. Lord, you have bidden us to come without money to receive grace beyond price. Hear us as we heed your call and turn to you in prayer, confident of your promise to hear and answer us. Father, we have sought meaning, comfort, and sustenance from all the wrong places. Grant us your Holy Spirit that our hearts may be turned to, toward your holy word, that we may hunger for your Son's body and blood, that we discern the truth from error, and for the sake of our kinsmen, boldly speak of salvation by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give you thanks that you have blessed us beyond what we deserve and given to us your church. Guard her life by your spirit and strengthen her witness before the nations. Bless all pastors and church workers in their service to us in your name. And bless those now considering and preparing for church work vocations, including our seminarians Adam Sternquist and Matthew Kinney. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for special days and occasions. We give thanks with Brian and Caitlin Gerke at the birth of Ever Hope, which means we also give thanks with Aunt Kristin, Kristen Gerke. We give thanks with Helen Burnage on the celebration of the birthday of her daughter, Dorothy Breeson. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are blessed daily to know abundance and freedom. Bless those who defend us from our enemies, who serve us in government, and who protect us in our communities. Be with our president, the Congress, our governor, and all our judges and magistrates, that they may discern the right path and lead us with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give thanks for the leadership you have provided for this, your congregation. This week, we pray and give thanks for the Board of Evangelism and Parish Services. Victoria Finzel, Wendell Peterson, Arlene Meyer, Nancy Blonsky, and Duane Stadness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we suffer with all manner of ills and afflictions. Hear us and grant to us healing according to your holy will, strength in time of trial, and peace at the last. We pray especially for Kristen Skinner, Marvin Sneller, Bob and Penny Martins, Kristen Basket, Kristen Peterson Wisher, and Sandy Winlock. We pray for friends of St. Matthew, Becky Nall, Whitman Williams, Deb Alec, James Chalmers, Brian Coombs, Alex Alexa Kusick, Elizabeth Sands, Ellen and Chad and their children Lila and Chase, 
And we also pray for Tim Zimmerman of the King's Brass as he anticipates heart surgery this week. We also pray for all who are homebound, including Betty Heinsohn and those we now name in the choir of our hearts. Good Lord, deliver us and teach us to depend upon your grace in all things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray that you would bring an end the, the coronavirus pandemic that plagues the world, and that you would bring to an end the violence that has overtaken our nation. Even though our faith is daily tested and tempted, give us strength and endurance that we may not despair, but have confidence in your sufficient grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we are daily and richly surrounded with your love and care. Grant us eyes to see your mercies new every morning and grateful hearts that what we have received we may share with those in need and generously support the work of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we remember the saints who lived by your mercy and died in Christ. We long for that day when all divisions will end and the church in heaven and earth shall be one in your presence, singing your praise in your kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we ask you to grant us all things needful and to keep us from all things harmful, that to our salvation we trust your wisdom and your love. Teach us to pray without fear. Your will be done. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church, your Holy Spirit, and the wisdom which comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide to the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Come to the wall.